Welcome to 360D CAD. Take a pause to like the video. To stay updated with new videos, subscribe the channel and do not forget to hit the bell icon. Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to see how to solve the problem of finite element analysis using ANSI software. So in this video, we are going to consider a 1D element having a problem as shown in figure and we are going to take the value of E as equal to 200 GPA. So let's start the problem on the ANSYS. So here first of all you have to start the static structural. You can simply drag and drop it over the blank screen. Here in the engineering data you can change the various properties of the material such as the density, Young's modulus of elasticity. So in the isotropic properties you can see the value of Young's modulus of elasticity. It is already given as a 200 e raised to 11 that is what it stands for 200 GPA. We can see it in MP also. So it is 2 into 10 raised to 5. So our value of data is correct. So we will just close the engineering data and then we will go to the geometry. So in geometry, you have to right click and start a new drawing on the design modular. So you have to wait a little bit when it gets started in the design modular window. So in this design modular window, first you have to draw the exact element as shown in figure, which is as shown in this so here there is a pick support on the left hand end then the load is applied at the mid position of the first bar first cross section that is a 20 kilo newton at the distance of 100 from left hand side then there is a change of cross section and the 10 kilo newton is applied at the end point so here you have to create a three separate line first from 0 to 100 100 to 200 and 200 to 350 so in this uh, diagram, we are going to draw the line on XY plane to make it parallel. You can simply right click on it and click on look at. Now we are going in, into the sketching window. Here we have to draw a line. So I will draw the first line. It should be a horizontal line. If you want to change the unit system that also you can do from meter. We will shift to the millimeter. Now go to the line select the origin point and draw a horizontal line again from this particular point we will continue the second horizontal line and from third point we will continue to the last horizontal line so first of all you have to draw it randomly and then you have to give the dimension so as this line is horizontal line we can give a horizontal dimension for giving the dimension you have to select the first point then second point and place the dimension then second point to third point and place the dimension and for the last first point second point and place the dimension so these three dimension h1 h2 and h3 has been arrived and we simply have to give the proper dimensioning h1 is 100 h2 is 100 and h3 is 150 so we have draw a three lines as per the given dimension now let's come back to the modeling we can simply right click on the screen and select as a fit to zoom so readjust the zooming of the systems so simply you can right click and zoom on the section which you want to get enlarged now we have to create go to the concept and we are going to create a line from the point so here you have to press the, pick the first point press the control button and then pick the second point and click on apply so your first line has been generated but you have to click on generate button so that the light will get created so here you can see as a one line and the, our part and body is been created as a line body now we are going to draw a second line so again go to the concept select line from points now again from second point press the control button and third point click on apply 
now here you want to make one changes so the operation is as add material so if we select this option the material will be get added to the first line so here the cross section area of first line and second line is same so there is no need to create a separate type of material for this line or a separate part and body so we will keep it as a add material and click on generate button so here you can see there are two lines been generated but the one part and one body now for the third line again go to the concept line from points now select the third point press the control button and fourth point now click on apply now here we want to make one changes because the cross section of the first material and second is different so instead of add material we are going to select the add frozen so add frozen will create a separate part and separate body now click on generate button so here we can see that the first two lines comes with the one line body and second part will come with the second line body now we have to add a cross section so as given in the figure that is a1 is equal to 200 mm square and a2 is 100 mm square so we are going to consider this cross section to be rectangle rectangular so go to the concept cross section and select the option as a rectangular so to have a 200 mm square of a area the dimension of the square will be 14.1421 mm by 14.1421 mm so here you can check the area is 200 mm square so first cross section is been created we can create a second cross section again here in the rectangular so second cross section has a cross section area of 100 mm square so we will keep the side as 10 by 10 so two cross section has been created now we just have to assign the line body the cross section area so for first line body we are going to select the rectangle 1 and for second line body we are going to select the rectangle 2 now we have to see this material in three dimensional form part in three dimension we can simply right click on it and click on the isometric view and just zoom on the proper view which you want to get it enlarged now if you want to see it in the three dimensional you are going to have to select the view and in the view you can select the cross sectional solid so here you can check out the total cross section area of the material but in this particular case as these are the two particularly separate line body this cannot be it will be treated as two separate body so if the load applied over this element will not be transferred on the first element so that is why we have to make this body as a united body so you have to select both the line body then make a right click on it and select a form a new part so the new part will treat this total object as a one part so here our design modular is completed so we will just close this window and now in the workbench screen our geometry is completed so there is a right click now we have to start a model so just double click on it it will start the ansys mechanical so it will take some time to get the model generated now here we have been entered in the ansys mechanical here you can see this is our first line second line and third line are been showing over here now we have to create a mesh now as per the diagram seen in this window which are requiring a total number of no element to be generated will be minimum three uh, element we will require so as we have to verify this with the mathematical calculation we will keep the number of node is same as the mathematical calculation so we are going to create a three element and total four nodes so for that you have to go to the mechanical screen in the mesh you have to right click on the mesh insert and select the sizing so we can define what should be the size of each mesh now here you have to select the element we have to select each line we should contain consider as a 
one element so here you have to select the edges so convert your selection to the edge and pick the all three lines by pressing a control button now in geometry click on apply so here it will show the total number of uh, object has selected as a three edges and our sizing is converted to the edge sizing now here we have to define by which the element size will be defined and we will set it to the number of division and we are going to keep the number of division as one so each edge will convert as a one element now you have to right click on mesh and create on generate mesh so our mesh is been generated and you can easily visualize the part shown in the screen now we have to add a su support condition so support condition what it will be on the left hand side or we can say it as a boundary condition so on left hand side we have to apply the fix support so we will just add it so on the static structural you have to right click and go to the insert and select option of fix support now the support will be applied on the vertex so here again you have to change your selection type to vertex go to select that particular vertex and click on apply so our first point has been fixed now what we have to do again we will check our question here you have to apply the force of 20 kilo newton in rightward direction at the mid of the first element so again right click on the static structural go to the insert and here you have to select the option force now we have to apply the force at the end of the first line so pick that particular vertex click on apply now it is been considered as a vertex but we have to apply the force in the x direction so instead of a vector we have to select a defined by force is defined by component and in x direction we are going to add a positive value because we have to apply force in this direction that is a positive side of x so it is given as 20 into 10 raised to 3 we can say it as a 20 e3 and it will be in the unit of newton so 20 kilo newton is load been applied in positive x direction now we have to create a similar one more force which is a 10 kilo newton on the end of this particular line so click on apply again define the force by component and select the value in the x is 10 e3 that is a 10 kilo newton in rightward direction so here our boundary conditions has been entered successfully now for this to solve it you have to right click on solution and click on solve so all the mathematical calculations which we have seen in the reference video the all will be performed in the background of the software now we have to check out the result so it is treated as a post processor so in result we are going to see the two type of result first one is a deformation and select you can either select a directional and to see the result in x direction or we can say it as a total which also going to say show the result in x direction itself because we have only one direction to be considered so we will just cl right click on the deformation and click on the evaluate all results so here we can see what are the deformation throughout the object here you have to focus it on that the colors it is showing on the screen is nothing but the range of the deformation it is having from so if we consider a blue color it has the deformation of 0 to 0.01945 so that is the deformation in this particular range and if we see a red color it means that the at this position the deformation value ranges from 0.155 mm to 0.175 mm and the maximum deformation in the part is 0.175 now we can verify this result from our mathematical calculations so whatever shown in figure now we have to calculate the forces uh, displacement on each particular node so for that we are going to 
click on right click insert and we are going to select a probe in the probe we will going to measure the deformation so select the deformation at last point the deformation value will be checked uh, so just select that particular geometry and in the result section we are going to see the deformation in x axis so let us just rename it to maybe we can rename it as a d1 d2 d3 and d4 so i am going to rename it as a d4 then we will add one more probe insert probe select the deformation now we will select this vertex and click on apply again we are going to see the result in x direction and rename it as a point d3 and we will add one more probe insert probe deformation and now we will select this d2 node click on apply and result in the direction of x just rename it to d2 now these three values we have created and just right click, right click on it and evaluate all result so it will show you a deformation at the node d4 that is having a value of 0.175 at d3 having a value of 0.1 and at d2 having a point of 7.5 into 10 raise to minus 2 means 0.075 mm and we can just verify it from the given screenshot of the problem which we have already solved in the previous in the another video mentioned in the description box now we are going to calculate how to draw calculate the stresses for that you have to go to the solution insert go to the beam tool and select a beam tool and in beam tool we can see a direct stresses minimum combined maximum combined so whatever we required is the direct stresses so just right click on and create uh, evaluate all result so here you can see a uh, direct stresses having a maximum stress as 50 minimum stress as 50 mpa and maximum stress as 100 mp uh, 150 mpa so here you can check it the maximum stress is being generated at the rightmost element and the minimum stress is generated at the that is a 50 mpa so these are the all result which we have calculated and one more thing we can calculate is nothing but a reaction force so to right click on solution insert again go to the probe and here we have to calculate the force reaction so force reaction again we have to select at the pick support we have to calculate the force reaction and just right click in on it and click on evaluate all result and now it is showing that is a total value in x direction of a reaction force that is a minus 30,000 that means minus 30 kilo newton and minus represent in the negative direction of x which you can see over here the direction of force is been shown so thank you everyone do subscribe the channel and like the video